hi guys welcome back to my channel it's your girl cc and we are back at it again today with another video and in today's video we are going to be reacting to if the quran and science say the same thing now in my opinion i do believe that the quran and, the, and science are on the same level they speak about the same thing you know like i said in my video one of my videos i did mention that if anything i would most likely revert to islam because of scientific facts or scientific reasons so yeah i do feel i save science and the quran they do really really much i'm currently in the process of learning more about it because i know that there's quite a lot and i know that there are people out there who try to um say that no the quran and science don't say the same thing so then you have to evaluate between the two learn it for yourself and understand it and that is the process that i am currently currently going through so once by god's grace i clear all the doubts in my head i will be ready to yeah but um it's all by god's grace so yeah let's get straight into it actually before we do get into the video if you're not following me on my instagram page please do so my name is cc.way so c-e-c-i dot w-a-y-y that is my instagram page and follow me there and we can have discussions over there as well so yeah with that being said let's get straight into today's video when i got older i heard scientists had found evidence of the big bang according to that theory the entire universe burst out of a single point in an instant of fiery creation. And now that science knows so much about our cosmic origins, what place is there for religious belief in the beginning? I want to know about the Islamic story of creation, so I'm going to Cairo. Islam has deep roots in science. Muslim astronomers were charting the heavens soon after the time of Muhammad. Speak to me about the, the Islamic concept of creation. In Islam, the beginning of the story starts with this massive cloud of smoke from which the heaven and earth are pulled from inside the smoke. And then the earth after that gets formed into what it looks like uh, before the beings are created. Interestingly, that is very cosmic. Right. In Islam, the moment of creation exists alongside the scientific view of Earth's formation. This is not the unbelievers see. These atheists, these agnostics, the people who deny the existence of God, can they see? In other words, Allah expects them to see, to be able to see, to witness. That the heavens and the earth were joined together as one unit of creation. And he split them asunder. Who is he talking to? Who is he addressing? Kafir. Which Kafir? The Badwins of 1400 years ago? No, no. What can the poor man understand? Well, what did he know about the universe, about the creation of the heavens and the earth? What did he know? He only accepted whatever was said. If this was Allah's kalam, amanna saddakna. We hear and we accept. We believe. This was Iman that they had. They didn't have a grasp. Allah is not addressing those unbelievers of the times of Muhammad, or the unbelievers in the Congo, or among the Eskimos who might not believe in God. No, 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 no. He is talking to the men of science, men of learning, who are now expounding to the world the theory of creation. That these astronomers with the mighty telescopes, when they're looking into space and they're analyzing the, the movements in the heavens, such a person with his great learning, he says that this universe came into being with a big bang billions of years ago. 
because he is watching the universe and he is noticing that these heavenly bodies are receding from a central place somewhere, is all going out in all directions, moving away, away, away. Like a balloon, when you blow it gets bigger and bigger, something like that is happening in the skies, in the heavens. These galaxies, they are receding from us at a faster and faster speed, at a faster and faster speed. So they say that this universe came into being with a big bang, a big bang theory. Who says that? The most learned men of science, astronomers. He say, where did you get these funny ideas from? This fairy tale about a big bang. So no, 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 it is not fairy tale. These are facts, demonstrable facts. We can demonstrate it, show you what is happening. And from that we can conclude if we had a film and put in reverse gear, so we could see what is happening is all coming back again. The way it's going out, the balloon, if we can deflate it, you'll see it all coming back to one central point. And there was a big bang. When did you discover this? He said, yesterday. Because 50 years is yesterday in the history of man. What is 50 years? Nothing. As an, an illiterate man in the desert, a person who didn't know how to read or write, a person who couldn't sign his own name, he could have, couldn't have known this, could he? He says, no, never. Impossible. Man doesn't know astronomy. He hasn't got the instruments. He hasn't got a telescope. Nothing in the desert and among an Ummi people, illiterate people. And he is now telling you, this man in the desert, 1400 years ago, Huma, and he split them asunder. And you biologists, people who study minute life, microplotism, the amoeba, he says, you know, life originated in the sea, water. Without this water, no life. And they tell you, so look, we look back in time, in space, he says, look, this is how life originated. There was a time when this earth was a molten mass. Nothing could have survived here, everything boiling, boiling, and over a period of billions of years, you know, the vapors went up and came down, and the vapors went up and came down and started cooling this earth, it took a billions of years and then started life, germs, plant life, and all these things started. At one time there was nothing, and then it started. Where did life come from? He says from the sea. Certain chemical action, the sun playing its part, and life started from there. Mm -hmm. When did you find this out? It's yesterday. Because 50 years is yesterday in the history of man. An illiterate man in the desert, he couldn't have known that, could he? He says, no, never. He says, well, listen. So, وَجَعَلْنَا مِنَ الْمَعِ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ حَيْءٍ And he has made from water every living thing. <laughs> so, أَفَلَا يُمِنُونَ Will you then not believe? Who? You, men of science. You, men of learning. You, kafir. You, atheist. You, agnostic. Why can't you believe? Then there's, of course, the famous ayah about the heavens and the earth which is the Arabic expression for the universe, heavens and the earth. كَانَتَا رَتْقًا The word رَتْقًا in Arabic means something that is fused and inseparable. Fused and inseparable. The word رَتْق was used when a mother is carrying a child because the mother and the child are inseparable. And when she would start delivering, the other was, word was used, فَتَقَى فَتَقَى is the part, the time for her to start parting. Literally her body is parting up and she's parting from her child. So the ayah says the heavens and the earth used to be fused and inseparable and then we caused them to come apart. Meaning there was the universe in, the, in origin, in, original, in its original form was a fused, united body, some sort of matter and then it became and spread out and then the words used later on, it spread out far and wide. So it's close to very close to, uh, interestingly close to the Big Bang Theory uh, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes the beginning of the heavens. As if that is not enough, look at the frontier project of NASA right now. They're looking for a sign of life on Mars, spending about probably close to a billion dollars, uh, 600 billion dollars on it, or going, going one trillion dollars. 
what are they looking for as a sign of life? Are they looking for emails, furniture? You know, they're looking for water. Because you find water, you're going to find life. The same verse in Surah Al-Anbiya, chapter 21, that told us how the universe started, is telling us what is the source of life in the universe. The continuation of it, and out of water, we have created every living thing. How would Prophet Muhammad know that? And as if that is not enough, you go to Surah Fusilat, chapter 41. The scientists would tell you that massive explosion, the stars and the planets did not come out like that. It was in the condition of smoke, huge light years areas of smoke, and then it got so intense inside it that the stars are born and the planets are born. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala settled to the heavens when it was in a condition of smoke and said to it and to earth, come, they said we come willingly. How would anyone imagine that, you know, the hills and the camels and the, the planet were smoke? But if it is the creator of heavens and earth, then, and that is being revealed to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu then you know it. And then the third phase, just recently, scientists discovered that that Big Bang is still happening. That explosion, the edges of the universe are still echoing and expanding at the edges of the universe. In Surah Al-Dhariyat, chapter 51, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, And the skies, the heavens, we have created with our own powers, and we are expanding them. This is the creator talk. Creator, 1400 in the years ago, in the Qur'an. And then subhanAllah, the Qur'an is filled. Surah 51, verse 47, wa inna As for the... Uh, the sky or the heavens uh, we have created it we have built it and we are expanding it uh, so this this uh, seems to be very clear that God, God here is uh, is doing the work he is uh, the active participle here Musi only I, we, we are expanding it in fact, I may add here, if you allow me, that uh, uh, some of the classical commentators were puzzled by the verse. And uh, they said, well, it, it just means that it is large or that mm. God is uh, filling it with more provisions because they couldn't conceive like the universe is expanding fast as it is already. Uh, so they avoided the obvious meaning. But as Maurice Bouquet has uh, shown in his book, The Bible, Quran and Science, uh, that is the literal meaning, uh, and that literal meaning actually makes sense to us today because we know today that the universe is expanding since the 1930, 1920s. Uh, this was discovered and it became a firm theory uh, and since 1964 uh, with the discovery of cosmic microwave background radiation uh, because that proved uh, once and for all that the universe is in fact expanding uh, from a big bang origin that occurred some maybe 14 uh, million years ago. Just a few decades ago, there was a conflict between our theology as Muslims and physics. Physicists believed in the steady state theory. They believed that the universe had no beginning. And in the Quran, it's clear the universe had a beginning. Now, the steady state theory has gone through a paradigm shift and we have the Big Bang theory now with 17 different models. And it's more in line with the Quran. But what would we as Muslims have done 50, 70, 80 years ago when the steady state theory was accepted by everyone, including people like Einstein? Would we just go around trying to argue with every single physicist that is wrong? No. We would say, well, this is a prevailing idea in physics and we accept it as Muslims and we accept it as a working model, working theory, working paradigm, but we don't believe it to be absolutely true. Maybe something will come in the future which will challenge it, which is actually what happened. The correct thing Islamically and the correct thing, even if you're not Muslim, is to understand science only gives you working models which can then change. And we need to understand we have a duty to be involved in science more than I would say other religious faiths or even people who are non-religious. Why? Because science as a method came from the Muslim world. The first scientist in history, according to even mainstream secular academics, historians like David C. Limburg, the first scientist in history and the first person who came up with the scientific method which we're using till today to make all of our technology is Hassan ibn Haytham, who lived approximately a thousand years ago, hundreds of years before Francis Bacon or Galileo or any of these characters. And he was not only a scientist, he was also a Quranic scholar. And he was the first person who actually, uh, and one of the things that he said was, in his biography, what drove him to do science was to become closer to Allah, become closer to God. That was actually his objective. And sadly, nowadays, 
science is associated with atheism. But as we know, the more you discover about something, the more you discover about the human body, the more you discover about the universe, if anything, it should lead you towards God, not away from God. Science explains how God explains for us why anything exists in the first place. So discovering how doesn't challenge why. Okay, so that brings me to the end of the video. And honestly, is I find it so incredible how the Quran and science correlate. I honestly do. There is so much, not even just one. There are so many things. For example, the splitting of the moon, the two seas that do not mix. There are so many factors when it comes to Quran and science that I feel like we all need to consider. You know, whether you are Muslim or whether you are non-Muslim, this is something we should all consider because the correlation is far too strong to ignore. And, you know, the Quran constantly goes on and says, which of these signs do you ignore? And it's like when you look around, when you see all these scientific facts, how are you going to ignore them? There is absolutely no way anyone can ignore it. You know, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, did not know these things. How else would a man in 7th century come about knowing all these factors? Not just one, several, several scientific facts. How can a man in the desert who was illiterate know these factors? Please tell me. Tell me. Or was he just like somehow an incredible scientist that no one knew about, you know? And one of the things that I constantly remind myself is that if Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was a liar, his companions would not agree with the things that he has said. They would not come, we would not have a hadith, you know? We would not have the sayings of the prophets or the life of the prophets. People would be saying, oh, he was a liar, don't follow him. You know, if he was truly a false prophet. And that is something that constantly goes into my mind. You know, although I have my questions, I also have these factors that I have to consider. So, yeah, for me, science and Quran are very, very strong. They are very strong. They are factors that I cannot just see and overlook. You know, I have to consider them. The Quran is far ahead of science. Up to now, scientists are still trying to discover new things. You know, and it's like when we look at ourselves as well, I just want to say, when we look at our human body, there is absolutely no way, there is no way any scientist can re, um, what's the word, can replicate that. You know, so yeah, the Quran is far ahead of science. Science needs to do some catching up. And also sometimes you just sit back and I'm just like, you know, this human body, this body, animals, there is absolutely no way any scientist, yeah, any scientist can put a human body together, can create a human body or can create an animal. There is absolutely no way. There has to be a God. There has to be a God in which I 100% believe that there is a God. All, all these scientific facts in the Quran. Honestly, when I first started reading the Quran, when I first started learning about Islam, I did not know the level of the Quran in science. I did not know how much they were so integrated together. I had no idea how close in relation they were until further down a couple of months later. And I'm like, oh, and I'm learning about the growth of, of the fetus. And I'm like, okay, hold up, hold up, hold up. You know, that is where my, um, what's the word? My discovery of science and the Quran started. For, I was watching a debate, yeah, I was watching a debate of ha Hamididas and somebody else. And I was like, oh, science is being brought up. And I'm like, oh, ooh, ooh, this is definitely something that will make me believe in, in Islam. So, yes.
like they say the quran is not a book of science it's a book of signs so yeah <laughs> thank you all so much for tuning in today i hope you guys enjoyed this video and i'll see you guys in the next one please do not forget to like comment share and please do not forget to subscribe and take good care of yourselves bye